Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, today we have, a, as you see, a guest from Maribor, Giga. And today it's going to be a little bit more uh, technical talk. Um, we will have a talk about photogrammetry. And Giga, who works at uh, Kibla Advale, uh, he there does the uh, like the digitalization of different objects um, and also does interactive experience for museums. And today he will talk about how um, how you can do like your own digitization as a, as a hobbyist with your, just with your phone. Or if you want to go a little bit more semi-professional or amateur, you could do it with the DLSR ca camera. Or at the last step, there is going to be like a, kind of like a music or archiving experience, and that's going to be like the last part. And without further ado, I will give Giga the word. Uh, yes, welcome. Uh, I am so I am Giga Pavlovic. We are in Maribor. Uh, we also have a little bit of a live audience here uh, in our uh, exhibition space at Kibla Portal. And um, um, we will talk today a little bit. Uh, I will start with basics a lot, but uh, at some points uh, I will add some uh, specific uh, parts um, where, or if you have any questions uh, where, where I should dive in, uh, you can just send the question to, to Rok and uh, he will, uh, I will see it on uh, another screen and then we can have a little bit more live uh, communication. Um, so you have probably uh, heard about photogrammetry for a long time. Uh, it has been uh, starting uh, to be used uh, in uh, video games um, to kind of speed up uh, the process of um, asset making. And uh, as you, we will see a little bit at the end with the uh, Apple's um, uh, object capture API announcement, um, if you have seen uh, their uh, videos, uh, you can see that how, how fast uh, uh, kind of the, this quick asset creation can be made uh, when you are making special effects for the movies. Um, and they can also be, with a little bit of tweaking, uh, be used as assets. Um, so uh, we started uh, kind of uh, to, to make it a hook uh, about today's presentation. Uh, we, we started... Um, kind of with the kind of three levels, uh, hobby, uh, kind of professional, or maybe uh, the, the last one is um, trying to use uh, uh, photography standards uh, to, to uh, in color calibration to try to capture the best or, or the kind of close to real uh, representation of objects that are especially needed in preservation of cultural heritage. Um, but, um, uh, I can say that uh, the hobby and the professional are getting blurry um, uh, very quickly. Um, so first, um, we, would you say why why would you need uh, the the, photo, the photogrammetry? Uh, I can do I can do my 3D models myself. I can do the uh, material design in Substance Designer, mm, but. Um, Especially when you are not doing uh, stylized uh, graphics, uh, you want to add uh, more realistic content, uh, it can actually uh, speed up the process. Uh, and especially uh, if you are uh, using um, uh, objects from the nature, uh, you can already see in uh, Unreal Engine these huge libraries of uh, mega scan assets uh, that are. Um, made with photogrammetry and they also do a lot of work with uh, material design uh, to make it um, this uh, really uh, high high level as a high level asset for for cinema use for special effects or for uh, games um, so uh, uh, first a little bit uh, i am um, I also go by the name Darian Medved. It's kind of an artist name. Uh, and uh, I have been uh, uh, many different things. I've been uh, born in Ljubljana. Uh, I was raised in Celia. <laughs> and in the end, I, I am kind of uh, now becoming more and more uh, from Maribor. I studied in Maribor. Uh, I also went to Finland for a year. And I also studied in Graz uh, interaction design. 
And uh, now I mostly work in um, interaction design. Um, I, I, I try, we, we make here in the lab uh, VR experiences, um, special uh, interactions for museums. And part of it uh, a lot um, recent, uh, recent times is um, um, digitalization of um, uh, cultural heritage, which is uh, a big um, EU push or, or at least the European Union uh, or European Commission uh, gives a lot um, to, uh, um, let's say, a lot of meaning uh, to 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 push for the digitalization, uh, especially from the examples that we've seen, uh, like the Paris Notre Dame, uh, which got burned, and this is something that we cannot replace, but we can at least experience it when we when we have it digitized properly. Uh, about Kibla to Lab, we are part of the consortium of uh, three laboratories. Um, one is from uh, Terbolia, Delovsky Dom Terbolia. Uh, another is Spina, who just opened their own uh, laboratory called HECA. And um, uh, Kibla in Maribor, um, we have started Kibla to Lab uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, I have to mention uh, that uh, right now, it just so happens, we are uh, in the middle of the uh, festival season. Uh, Easy is, is starting today. Um, a lot of our uh, group is already in Copper. Um, so this is uh, the kind of festival uh, art uh, of digital art uh, and uh, computer arts um, in Isis. Um, even more, uh, tomorrow is starting um, uh, Speculum, Speculum Artium in Terbolia, which is more about uh, VR and uh, ro uh, robotic uh, computer arts. And Kiblix, uh, we, we are having in uh, one week, we have a, a kind of the second stage of our festival uh, opening here in Portal. Uh, otherwise, we are dealing with uh, pilot projects, uh, uh, specifically with uh, museum installations, uh, um, including uh, new digital uh, interactions. Uh, we have uh, art residencies and we offer um, our labor laboratory for kind of practice for students. Um, so today, I just quickly about, uh, I, will, I will have to mention uh, where the kind of X XR hardware future is going, especially with uh, Facebook and Apple announcements. Well, not really announcements, more like speculation, but Apple, uh, no, Facebook recently did launch um, uh, their glasses in collaboration with Ray-Ban, although those are uh, kind of not really in XR space. Uh, they are more um, uh, just used for, for uh, capturing the spaces which will be uh, used in the future for, for kind of uh, this meta space that is uh, coming up, especially in kind of AR meta space uh, where the digital is layered on, on top of the actual uh, our real world. Um, we will also talk about basic rules for photogrammetry, basically uh, what, what you have to uh, take into account when, when you try to make the best, uh, uh, the best pictures uh, that you can um, to have the best result in photogrammetry. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about basic workflow uh, software that is used mostly. And in the end, I will talk about object capture, which if you own uh, a new Mac, uh, especially uh, M1 silicon with silicon chip, or if you if you own the the previous uh, uh, Macs, in any case, if you have the new OS, uh, Mac OS or Monterey, uh, you are now able to use uh, object capture, uh, and especially kind of there's already an app, free app that you can use that uh, basically uses this API in the in the graphical interface. Um, and basically, we used to have uh, a lot of these programs that you had to pay license or you can use Meshroom as an open source software. And, uh, but I mean, if you own a Mac, this, this, uh, this uh, software, Object Capture, it's actually quite amazing. And I will, I will talk at the end a little bit more, um, not, not more, but uh, just, just one slide about um, archival standards, uh, if you wanna approach that at some, um, some point in the future. So this is, uh, this is a graphic from Qualcomm uh, already from two years ago. 
um, uh, or not two years, but in 2020, uh, they kind of released uh, this uh, this um, roadmap uh, in terms of hardware. They are, the Qualcomm is the maker of the chips that are uh, mostly used, the Snapdragon uh, chips that are used in these um, hardware devices. And they are expecting that uh, standalone AR, I mean, it's already today with Quest and uh, HoloLens and um, uh, at, the, at, at the bottom you see these cabled uh, versions um, that are all already available on the market. Uh, of course, it always depends on uh, the pricing and the content, that this is always, always the problem with the content. Um, and in the future, when 5G networks will be uh, more available or um, more people will use the 5G network, uh, we can then ditch the cable. So, because the connection will be uh, so seamless that uh, we won't need the cable anymore. And um, uh, so in 10 years, then this kind of form factor of, of just glasses, uh, that the chip will be so small and all the hardware will be so small, it's uh, then probably 10 years ahead. So these are these are already the products that are used uh, in um, I mean that are already on the market, and uh, I'm specifically talking about those because um, this is this is why uh, at least it's, it, in in one way in what way why Apple is uh, has been investing in the object capture AI because um, if you imagine um, at least this is my my uh, kind of. Um, uh, how I see it is that uh, you have uh, Instagram for pictures, uh, but when you have these AR glasses, uh, of course, um, uh, in mixed reality, uh, the 2D pictures will not be enough. So you want to uh, create and play with with 3D uh, assets. So you need you need a way to quickly uh, create um, uh, these assets that you can then send to friends and uh, you can you can play around or make some experiences around them and uh, of course we are all waiting um, um, the anticipation what what Facebook or, or at least uh, I have made a bunch of um, these are all the kind of speculation how the Apple glasses will look um, but Facebook with with Oculus basically has already went uh, standalone uh, these are the Oculus Quest is basically the, the only um, had said that they are um, um, developing, and with uh, the connection or, or cable, or now with AirLink, which you can then connect uh, the headset via uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, kind of the best version is the Wi-Fi 6 uh, on the 5 gigahertz uh, network. You have a, you have a quite seamless um, connection now that uh, basically. You connect it to a PC and uh, you have the same experience as Rift before. Um, so with photogrammetry, it's uh, it's a kind of uh, the what what the the programs for photo what all the programs for photogrammetry do, uh, at least um, in in the way that we are going to discuss today, is that uh, you make shots from multiple angles. Uh, and then the software will pick up the features and then triangulate uh, the positions of the of, of your shots in the in the 3D space, um, and and from that uh, it can it can then generate first the point cloud. So what you get, for example, from laser scanning, uh, it generates the point cloud, connects uh, those dots together to create a, a polygon mesh, and uh, then it can project the textures onto the mesh um, from these multiple multiple pictures um, and now this is this is something that if you want to then go and try yourself um, the first time and maybe maybe uh, in uh, I, I only see the private chat I'm just wondering uh, how many of you have tried uh, photogrammetry before um, you have tried yes tried photogrammetry okay so uh, today we'll, we'll have a basic one, but uh, we can then maybe in QA have a more depth, in-depth discussion. Um, what the basic rules are, you really need the sharp images uh, as much as possible. Um, so in, in general, the, the, what happens is that you need a really good lightning, uh, light, uh, light setup. Uh, so 
so you can get the faster shutter speed um, and uh, so you don't you you have as little movement or or um, basically you have you have sharp images. If you don't have sharp images, then you will have so many defects in the in the um, tree model that you will spend a lot of time fixing it, and it's probably better just to to make the shots again. But this is often not possible when you are um, in you when you are remote when you are already you have already captured the uh, images in some place and then you're at home figuring out that um, you have problems with uh, generating. So, so sharp images are kind of uh, really important. Um, when you are making, uh, when you are capturing a set, you need to have a fixed focal length. Um, you, you, you cannot change, uh, you, well, you must not change the, the focal length. Um, otherwise, the, the software will have a lot of trouble um, figuring out the correct regulation. Um, the kind of rule of thumb is uh, 60 or 70 percent of overlap, uh, high depth of field, which basically means you need to have like uh, a big f-stop. Um, so you have uh, kind of a bigger distance uh, sharpness and. Photogrammetry uh, makes, uh, um, is rely, re reliant on the feature set. So if you have uh, smooth surfaces, if you have reflective surfaces, if you have uh, kind of just white surfaces with, with no difference uh, in, in, in texture or shadows, then, then the software will also have a lot of, uh, a lot of problems. Um, if you cannot avoid, uh, or if you have to, for example, um, um, make a set of uh, for shiny surfaces, then it's often uh, um, kind of the only way that you use uh, special markers that uh, then the software can use for 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 um, positioning. So sh uh, use high shutter speed um, to 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 make a sharp image as possible because this will be then um, if you have a blurry image, then um, um, the software will not find any features. Uh, a big overlap, so uh, you so the 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 camera or the will get as as many uh, nooks as possible, and uh, because it's reliant on the feature extraction from the photographs, uh, the kind of the, the bigger overlap you have, the more feature it can find in different photos. That's why uh, the kind of seventy percent of overlap is. Uh, Kind of, uh, kind of middle or rule of thumb, or recommend it. Um, but of course, the more pictures you have, uh, the longer the software will, will work. But today, with if you have a good enough uh, working station, um, that is not a problem because this, the software algorithms have come so far that um, um, the kind of hardware requirement uh, is is become lower. Um, when you are deciding on the lens, um, if you go, I mean, some people use uh, 18 or, or lower, uh, but there's always uh, the lower you go. I mean, you have, oh, sorry, uh, you have a wider shot, uh, you, you can capture more uh, data, uh, but because of that, you have kind of a more fish, fish, uh, fish eye effect, it's more distortions, and uh, if, the, uh, if the software will not recognize or cannot uh, uh, kind of um, change ch or recognize these distortions, then, then you will also have a distorted uh, model or will not even um, correctly, um, correctly um, uh, kind of match all the, the photo uh, positions. Uh, and if uh, the camera or if the software cannot um, cannot uh, apply positions for the cameras, then you cannot generate the model. Uh, and the, the, the higher you go, the, the kind of, uh, the, the, the more steeper angle you have, um, you need more pictures uh, to kind of get the overlap needed. So um, kind of 24 or I use mostly uh, uh, 35. Uh, mi millimeters is is good. The problem with macro lenses, if if you use a macro lens for small objects, is that usually macro lenses have a very shallow um, depth of field. 
So you will get only a small part of the object sharp and the rest uh, like behind and, and uh, in front will be uh, blurry. So that, that macro is probably useful uh, only if you do like really small objects and uh, far away. And if you then use um, focus stacking, which is a kind of a way that uh, you do multiple shots, um, uh, you do multiple pictures, but you're moving camera just front. Uh, you always move camera a little bit more um, kind of forward. So you get, you make the pictures uh, from, like you get uh, all of the kind of front, middle and back of the object um, sharp and you need special software then to, to um, combine this picture. This is used in macro photography to create this really sharp, uh, small object, uh, but they need to make multiple shots uh, moving the camera so they get um, all of the objects uh, sharp. So this is the example. If you have shallow depth of field, for example, in the upper picture, you will have only a small, um, so only a small section that would be sharp and every, everything else will be um, uh, bl very blurry. So if you have you have to use um, high f-stop um, or in or actually um, um, so you like in terms of seven or more um, you, it's a setting on a camera and then you uh, you have to if you go below seven then then it's uh, the pictures are getting less useful but of course this is always uh, always a kind of uh, a play because. Uh, the higher you go, uh, the, the darker your image uh, comes, and then you need more uh, light onto your object so you get uh, the right exposure. I also have to mention that um, because the, the, the photographs are, so the, the algorithms, the software itself um, takes the data or the pixels from the, from the photo, any kind of, um, any kind of after so for example, when you do some modification, you do some, uh, even if you do uh, noise correction um, on the picture, any, any kind of modification after uh, it will, this is, this is kind of uh, no-go because uh, you will lose the, the uh, unified um, kind of um, sort of capture standard over the, the pictures because some of the pictures would be modified, the pixels would change, and then the, the algorithm will not recognize those features anymore. So even if you do sharpness, you can do uh, a little bit of sharpness. Uh, this I'll talk a little bit later about it. So I will skip maybe. So I don't, <laughs> I don't go into uh, too, too detailed. Um, um, uh, technical stuff but uh, there are some so as I said before if you have glass uh, this is an example on the on the right uh, when you have glass surfaces um, uh, there are a lot of re reflections when you move the objects uh, you will have uh, different light reflections and um, uh, the software will not know uh, anymore if, if it's the same objects or different objects it will not find the features that's why when you just want to do a 3D model without the texture, uh, you spray it but if you if you can. I mean, if you are allowed to. Do. There are also some sprays that uh, can get uh, removed quite easily after, even for cultural heritage. Uh, sometimes uh, it it can be used. Uh, so at least you get a model, and then you can. If it's if it's glass, then you use a glass uh, material on it, and and it, it's kind of, um, and you're done that way. You get you get the shape. Uh, at least um, that way. But of course, you always you, you see the best examples, uh, kind of the rocks, uh, because they have a lot of um, um, uh, texturized areas, a lot of differences. Uh, the camera will know exactly uh, where where that feature is, and it it's not a pattern. So, for example, if you have a pattern, uh, like your um, uh, your your kind of trying to make. Um, a 3D model out of something that is uh, that has a lot of patterns, um, or when you rotate it, is kind of the same. So you even you cannot recognize 
which picture is from which side, then the software will also have a problem. Uh, and then you can also use uh, special markers, at least, so the software will know, okay, this is pictures goes here, this pictures goes there. And today, uh, with a smartphone, you can get um, pretty good pictures. Um, even later on uh, in the, the Apple, so for example, if you use the, uh, the Apple uh, 12 Max, uh, it has um, really high resolution and camera, especially maybe the new Samsung Ultra. Uh, Samsung, I think, 21 Ultra um, has, uh, has a lot of resolution. Of course, you're sacrificing on color uh, reproduction, um, um, exposure settings, um, um, so you get uh, you get good good enough results uh, for assets, uh, but uh, if you want to go forward, uh, you use um, the the cameras that uh, has that have uh, as much uh, pixels or as much uh, as big of a resolution as possible. Although uh, at some point you kind of hit uh, diminishing returns um, because. Um, the, the more pixel the sensor has, uh, the, the more the more sensitive it is, and any kind of shaking, uh, it will be seen that more. So you will have blurry, uh, blurry cameras. I mean blurry pictures. Uh, so kind of uh, in in uh, in general, uh, if you are going to to the top, you are using uh, phase one uh, cameras on the on the right. Um, these are cameras. Um, that are in the range of uh, 30,000 plus. Um, but kind of the middle ground uh, now is uh, to use um, Sony A, so Sony Alpha um, 7R. Uh, the R stands for the, the camera is, the, the sensor is more made for bigger resolution. Um, and that one, the, the fourth version supports uh, 61 million pixels. Uh, you will also uh, maybe see a lot of uh, people use uh, Sony A6000. Uh, this is also a good full-frame camera, so it means that have that has a, a kind of larger chip than uh, a larger uh, photo chip than uh, usual cameras. Of course, you are you're not uh, limited to Sony. Um, you, you can use uh, you can use any other uh, camera. Um, so one important part is that you always kind of try to record with a tripod uh, when you're in nature. Uh, but this is an example in the studio uh, where you have a fixed light setup. So you get, uh, you try to get as as um, uh, uniform uh, light uh, setup, uniform light uh, from everywhere on the object. Because what you want to do is avoid the shadows. Uh, you want to avoid shadows because um, you want to get a flat albe uh, albedo or a diffuse map. Uh, because uh, especially in, in, in games, uh, you or, or uh, we uh, generate the shadows uh, in the game engine. Um, so any kind of shadows that are baked on the uh, diffuse map would be kind of um, um, uh, not not just necessary, but um, but um, are really not appreciated actually. So that makes uh, buildings uh, uh, kind of scanning uh, the buildings a little bit uh, harder in that matter because you cannot really make it in a studio. Uh, but so for that, uh, people get a general three D three D scan of the of the uh, kind of facade, but then they generate their own materials and they apply them on the 3D model. Um, so one important thing that I can, I can say about this picture is uh, the, the turntable gradually rotates the object and you make uh, a shot with the camera each time, each, uh, so each rotation, I mean, not full rotation. It usually takes uh, about uh, 24 pictures per full rotation and you want to take uh, at least uh, uh, the pictures in three rows. So one from the bottom up, uh, one from the up down, and one from the middle. 
and you also try to capture the objects, um, so the full objects in a in a in a frame of the camera, uh, at least once, or or in this case in in three uh, layers, um, because the the software will then know exactly okay these features goes here. Even if you later do the detail parts where you come close to the object and then uh, make detail shots to make to make the certain parts more sharper. But if you just do small details around the objects and you never uh, make the, 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 the objects in a full frame, uh, then you will have problems. Um, you will create problems for the software trying to figure out where, where the uh, kind of all the features go. So sometimes you might have some um, uh, misalignment uh, when making. Uh, there is also, uh, there is also uh, I have to mention, so, for example, in this object, uh, this object, you 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 make a photo set, a photo kind of layer uh, standing like this, but you you cannot capture the bottom one, especially maybe in more uh, kind of objects like apples. Um, in that case, you turn it around uh, and you make another three layers, um, and then the software will will recognize. Uh, sometimes maybe you do two sessions, you you generate two. Uh, two different um, uh, models, I mean, of the same uh, model, but you make two different parts of the model, and then you merge it uh, in, in the software. So that, that's how you can get the upper and bottom part. Um, for added precision, uh, you can also then include laser scanning, especially uh, if you want to use, or if you, want to, if you need your models to be real scale. Uh, because uh, laser scanners are calibrated, and um, when you make, uh, when you laser scan the, the kind of uh, the the actual size or scales of the objects are um, are then written. Uh, so this information can be then added uh, into the for for software, and you can combine uh, laser scans with uh, photogrammetry, so you get more precision. Uh, so you get a correct scale of the mesh and a bigger precision uh, of the mesh. Uh, the limitation of the laser scanning, or at least in this case, um, uh, this, this scanner specifically from, from Artec called Leo is trying to also uh, uh, kind of uh, limit this uh, or um, to, to, to give a, away from that limitation because uh, laser scanners, um, uh, they 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 can with with additional photo photographs get uh, color data for each pixel or for each dot uh, in the point cloud that they can get. Uh, but when you when you just combine um, uh, this kind of uh, point cloud uh, point uh, color data, uh, then it generates vertex color data. And when you combine it, uh, you get you don't you don't get um, so precise texture. Uh, you get uh, a really blurry texture. That's why um, laser scanning is used as a companion, not not by itself, because the textures then will uh, will not be satisfying. Um, but uh, but in this case, as I said, Arctic Leo is combining laser and phot uh, photographs uh, together, so uh, it's trying to. Um, um, to go away with this limitation, so you can just use one device for for quickly uh, scanning and making uh, good textures. And uh, this device also uh, works well for reflective materials. Okay, Rock, do you have any questions for me? Uh, uh, yeah, there actually okay. is a question. Yeah. Um, so the question is from Alexander. Um, are there any photo sets that we can use for playing around with the software? Um, he means if you have any, if he has any of his own photo sets uh, to truly understand each parameter and that uh, that Meshroom offers. Um, uh -huh. Do you understand the question? Yeah, Meshroom. Uh, I will talk a little bit, just a small about uh, Meshroom. Meshroom is um, an open source software for photogrammetry um, I mean I, I I worked with it a little bit but it's uh, it's kind of a, more like a, a really nice graphical uh, uh, user interface for scientific work 
on on these uh, different algorithms for photogrammetry. So, like um, a lot of the a lot of the algorithms there are really for for kind of um, like scientists competing with each other, which algorithm is the best. So, so it's um, um, so even myself, I I would not understand all of these parameters in in MetaShape are are quite because uh, the other uh, no I said MetaShape I meant Meshroom because in uh, the professional um, or at least uh, paid uh, license programs uh, all of these uh, all of these um, kind of parameters are hidden from the user because. Um, uh, you you press you want high detail low detail or, or you want this kind of and and the companies themselves uh, would kind of say okay this algorithm is better we will use this one so you don't have to click which one to use um, um, and uh, that's why that's why in for example in MetaShape uh, the the workflow workflow is pretty straightforward you you just click uh, you don't you don't uh, really go with um, like if, like which algorithm to use. Um, uh, but in terms of photo sets, I mean, um, you for example, you could use any other uh, any photo sets like from that you can find from MetaShape or, or um, um, if you go to for example, even if you go to the uh, Object Capture API uh, website, uh, Apple is um, also uh, um, giving. Um, uh, so, for example, uh, these uh, photo sets that, of course, you can you use it for testing the the ob ob object capture, but uh, you 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 can use them for any other. And uh, especially if you use one photo set, you can then test different software, and you you can see the difference. Um, um, well, at least in the result, but you you don't really know why. So, um, usually we. Um, we just use the same photo sets to compare the result because that's what's important. Um, although I have to, I have to say because I remember in the object capture um, photo sets, the, uh, they use the Apple uh, iPhone uh, format. Uh, so maybe, maybe that, maybe leave that one just for uh, Apple ones. Um, uh, maybe some other like question from me. I think there's no other questions, but um, yeah, for me, like question, like uh, you talked about like how to scan buildings and that you try to avoid like shadows and stuff like that. But what about like uh, bigger, like how to say, uh, how to photo scan like bigger areas? Because I know some companies also do that, like they scan like whole like city blocks and stuff like that. Yeah, is that I mean, like um... practical or? Yeah, the the best. I mean, the best uh, the best way would would uh, be to do it in a cloudy weather, so you have you don't have sharp uh, shadows. So cloudy weather, you have a lot of diffused light, and uh, if you look at the at the kind of then on the building, uh, you won't see a lot of shadows uh, because they would get kind of smeared. Um, so mm -hmm. that would be the best the best time to when you have to do it outside and you have to make uh, textures um, like you have to kind of just capture the, the real space then then really wait for for cloudy weather uh, okay otherwise I, I I go on I have now a little bit about um, so now we go into just a workflow so get the best uh, possible photo capture the best uh, uh, the, the, the best results you you, you can get with uh, capture uh, the easier the, the generation will be uh, we talk a little bit, so maybe I just, you get the initial design, but uh, let's just talk, go into, uh, well, when you, when you capture with the phone, you don't really consider yourself uh, with raw editing, um, because you don't, you don't capture the images in raw, you just capture them in JPEG and you're, you're done. Um, but um, for for in the for the more professional level, it's really I mean it's not not even an option. Uh, you have to um, capture in RAW uh, because uh, you want to capture the the, the correct uh, correct color information. And usually on the first set uh, or the first picture that you make in a set, uh, you use the color checker, um, and uh, with this you can then. Uh, uh, so in this um, raw editing software, you can then uh, calibrate um, 
uh, based on the lightning you had on the on the studio. Um, you, you, usually it's pretty straightforward. You you click uh, one of those uh, gray areas. Uh, it calibrates uh, the the white balance uh, because I mean you can do it on a on a camera, but uh, it's never precise enough. So and uh, also you can you can do it with a little bit of uh, sharpening, just a little. Uh, and uh, another another one is if you have, I mean, you will always have a little bit of shadows, uh, and uh, except if you use a ring light um, or you use like this flash really in front of the, uh, so just beside the camera and you use polarized uh, filter on the camera and for polarized uh, linear polarized filter on the, on the flash. So basically um, you eliminate all uh, reflections and uh, because the, the light is coming straight from the camera, you will also get almost no shadows. Uh, that is the desired effect. Because uh, on, the, on this picture on the, on the right, you can see the model um, on, the, on, the, on the right, uh, no, the model on the, uh, on the left uh, is uh, it's looking quite cool because it has, it's not flat, it's, it has uh, um, shadows. But this is not desired uh, for the game asset uh, or any kind of asset. It's really not desired because, um, because uh, I mean, except if you're just going to leave it like this. Because otherwise, uh, when you import your asset, like I said before, import it in the game engine, and you put your own lights, uh, you create your own shadows, and then you, your your dynamic or your generated shadows will get mixed with the baked shadows or baked shadows in the in the texture and this is the, you will not get the same effect um, there exists um, uh, free software like from agisoft uh, it's called delighter um, and uh, you can then showcase the area of highlights or and shadows and the software will use ai to try to um, um, kind of uh, lower the the contrast, or I mean, uh, lower the the difference between shadows and highlights. So you what what you want to get is uh, kind of the texture on the on the right, um, and you can also do a little bit of this uh, in in the software uh, in the raw edit software where you lower the highlights and and um, um, and lower the shadows. Uh, so you you kind of um, ch uh, you lower the difference between them. Um, and I also see which, 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 uh, I see the question, which software do I use for color correction? Um, I mean, we, it depends on, yeah, it depends on the, the camera I use. So we use a Sony camera and uh, it's always a debate between uh, photographers. Uh, we have, in the studio, we have one professional photographer uh, we always we always have debates uh, on, on topics like this because <laughs> um, because um, um, I mean he learned something from me in terms of uh, of uh, of uh, capturing for for photogrammetry and I, I learned something from him in terms of uh, photography uh, setups uh, and kind of light light design uh, but uh, yeah it depends on which camera I use and um, uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, different software will have different algorithms for um, uh, kind of uh, color, um, uh, color. Um, uh, I don't know if you if you make uh, more more portraits uh, or more like people, uh, you will use a different software. Uh, but uh, in our case, we use uh, Capture One um, software uh, for for Sony. Yeah, Capture One for Sony. And uh, yeah, raw editing. So, and then, then you have, you export, uh, yeah, I have to say, uh, you export, I mean, um, you can export it in TIFF format, uh, 16, like for the, for the best uh, quality, or um, for, for you, can, you can export it in JPEG, 8-bit, uh, and then uh, you import it into photogrammetry software. Um, I would say they're like the, the top two are MetaShape and Reality Capture, especially Reality Capture, uh, which was um, acquired uh, from Epic. Um, and in terms of licenses, they're, they're similar. MetaShape, Reality Capture, and Zephyr 3D are very similar. It's, it's around uh, uh, 3000 or uh, $3,700. Um, 
although MetaShape does have a standard license, which is uh, just uh, 180. Um, and uh, Reality Capture also has a, a version, a kind of free to use. So uh, for example, you can really take Reality Capture, you can download it, you can import your images, you can use it fully, and uh, you can play, play around with settings, um, 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 you can, I mean, use a lot of different, you can, you can generate the models. Uh, a lot of times there is no um, limit. Uh, there's no, no trial period, nothing. Uh, but when you want to export it, when you want to, you will kind of, you are satisfied with your 3D model, you want to export it, uh, you, you can pay. So you register for, like you register your imports. For example, um, it's based on the resolution of the photos that you input into software. And then you you uh, kind of register those photos. It's usually, for example, for around 200 pictures that you make, for, even for our camera, which is uh, has uh, uh, 60 million um, uh, pixels, uh, like 60 million pixels, um, uh, 200 cameras would be around seven dollars. So it's when you make a model out of that, uh, you can you can really play. So it's actually really accessible. Um, Meshroom is free, open source, uh, but the problem is, for me at least, that uh, it takes a long time. Um, it, you, you, you kind of put your, your images uh, inside uh, and then you press generate and it takes eight hours. So that's, that's a limitation. It's totally free. You, you can use the assets, but uh, they, uh, they don't have that advanced tools that, that are really useful when you're editing inside uh, the, the software. Uh, because sometimes you get some errors in the model and maybe uh, you try to combine two, uh, two these kind of um, uh, parts of the model together and uh, uh, you have to sometimes you, uh, use uh, uh, dense point clouds and, and uh, just trying to, to kind of save, save, the, the, uh, save the, the capture that you made. Um, so so we 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 don't really use meshroom um zephyr 3d we haven't really tried um and these uh, other ones that are that are even more like recap bentley tools these are really high professional but they are more used for 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 cat for computer aided design um they have uh, specific algorithms that um they usually take um, point clouds so you can you can um um uh, you can generate uh, uh from the pictures but then uh, they use uh, the, the point clouds from those to uh, kind of um, uh, generate uh, not polygons, like not these organic shapes, but uh, try to, to make it like um, really straight. So they are not uh, like straight walls like you would, you would make a CAD, uh, a CAD model, like in Autodesk, for example. So they, they generate the... Uh, for example, they they uh, kind of from algorithms they recognize where it should be a wall because it's kind of a lot of um, a lot of uh, dots in the in the same plane, and then they just generate one polygon, one huge polygon. So yeah, you can get um, like these really low polygon uh, models, but uh, uh, they are not. Um, um, we don't really use a lot of architectural um, scanning here. So, so we go with, um, uh, with MetaShape at the moment, but we are trying to then switch to reality capture. Uh, so MetaShape look, looks like this. Um, it's pretty straightforward UI. Um, chunks are this kind of uh, uh, your sets of cameras. And then when you move the model, you would have to create another chunk uh, for another, or you, if you change the settings of the camera, you also make it in another chunk, but then those, you can then merge those chunks. You can align them and merge them if they are, they are the, the model or the point cloud is good enough. Um, you can generate a dense cloud and you can, you can have an option to generate a 3D model from a dense cloud or, uh, or uh, directly from depth, depth maps. But for this generation, you need a really good graphics card. Uh, uh, with a, ro a lot of RAM, like th the more pictures you use, the the high resolution, the, the 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 better graphics card you need to have. Otherwise, you you also need a lot of RAM on the computer. So this this is uh, reality capture. It has a lot more settings, 
Uh, what I like in Reality Capture also is uh, actually the the report. I mean, MetaShape has that too, but um, uh, especially for um, uh, oh, I have to speed up. Sorry, <laughs> but the report the report um, uh, option uh, gives you this kind of uh, really in one paper all the camera settings, all the errors, all the all the this uh, this is needed for um, for uh, um, cultural heritage digitalization because uh, they're not uh, they're oftentimes they're not really um, it's not it's not uh, it's more important to have um, um, a document of error that uh, or like the what what's the range of error then uh, then that you get really precise in into the colors but like you can be really precise but you, if you don't really have a, an estimation of of the error uh, from from real and and um, uh, I mean, what what the uh, software uh, can can think what the error is, uh, then the the in the future they will not know exactly like is this is this real or not. So that's why these reports are really uh, needed. Uh, yeah, and this is the example of of Meshroom, which which uses node node based um, that you can then combine a node based uh, sets or or nodes. Um, that you can then combine and but it it, it is uh, what is interesting with Meshroom that you can then make these really big nodes. You can do multiple stuff, but you can do that in uh, in MetaShape and Reality Capture too with with um, um, uh, batch. So you can do batches. So you can do like multiple um, generate uh, multiple uh, settings for to generate at once. So you can like leave your computer to the night and you can come in back in the morning. And it will be set up. Okay. Mm. So when, so for example, you you create your uh, first, uh, you generate your first model. It's high polygon. Um, you 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 want to use. Um, you you will always get some defects. You want to maybe uh, uh, kind of make your mesh better. Uh, you maybe decimate it a little bit because at the beginning you have millions of polygons and you might not be able to edit it in the 3D software, so you have to decimate it a little bit, not too much, uh, because maybe like half a million if you if you if you if you can, uh, and then you uh, then you um, well basically this you can yeah you can do the decimation, but uh, what you see here is uh, kind of the final. Um, mm, uh, final results, although I have found uh, better algorithms for remeshing. So, um, so you want to edit all the kind of artifacts. Um, maybe you do some sculpting in. I, I mostly use Blender. Uh, it's getting actually uh, better and better. Um, and uh, you maybe you you kind of um, correct, especially if you just make assets for games. Uh, you can correct some some uh, artifacts. Uh, you can close close some mesh, um, kind of holes. Uh, you can use uh, mesh lab to kind of fix the mesh so it doesn't have this um, non non manifold faces, for example. Um, but at the end, uh, you want to have it as close to the to the real uh, model, um, and uh, and uh, remeshed. And you 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 can use then different software to to kind of optimize the UV maps so you have this optimized asset. Um, so for example, and this is uh, how it looks then, uh, you can import it into Sketchfab uh, and then uh, you have this kind of really nice uh, textures. Of course, uh, you would uh, you would then want to take these textures and, and uh, uh, kind of um, play with them in uh, Material design because you need different uh, different um, um, reflectors, different uh, so this normal you generate normal maps. You want to have uh, um, so for example the the materials on on these objects should be different. Um, so so you can use um, Quixel Mixer or Substance Designer to kind of uh, separate um, separate the, the textures and generate uh, different. Um, uh, different material, um, uh, like this physical, um, how the how the material reacts. So maybe some shiny parts um, should be uh, should have more reflectance, for example. Um, so this is this is a lot uh, a lot you have to do by hand. And um, just uh, at the end, I will um, then go to 
uh, what is the new with uh, the new Mac OS, so Monterey. Um, uh, Apple has announced object capture, uh, a set of uh, scriptable, um, um, so it's, it's, uh, you can script it and you can make your program for yourself. Um, but uh, this is, for example, um, so taken from uh, directly from Apple's uh, presentation, uh, you see the model. Um, so you see the photo and the model on the on the on the left. And this 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 has been done with um, 200 photos from from iPhone. Um, so just just to give you a quick, uh, if you want to try it yourself, if you have a Mac, they have three different. So there's not a lot of settings. That's that's what Apple is known for. They try to make it as um, as kind of seamless or possible or or intuitive. Or you, they don't give you a lot of options. Um, so you have uh, three when you when you import your photos. You have three options to generate an object. Uh, reduced, which is uh, which is low polygon decimated uh, objects. Uh, it doesn't use a lot of um, memory. Um, so it's used mostly for um, mobile phones. Uh, the medium also uh, uh, it has a little bit more polygons, and the full one uh, is like full polygon, and, but also it has uh, different uh, different uh, texture maps. So, for example, this is the 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 full one, and you can see it also generates automatically generates uh, displacement, roughness, um, ambient occlusion, diffuse map. Uh, I mean, diffuse you always get, but you always get the diffuse, and you can also generate the normal map. But the other ones are are more more specific. Um, so, so you, with 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 uh, PhotoCatch, uh, uh, which is basically just a graphical uh, user inter inter interpretation of of the API. Uh, yeah, you can quickly generate really nice looking objects. But of course, uh, if you go back, you really need to uh, still be aware of the basic rules, um, like 70 percent um, uh, overlap, sharp images, uh, consistent lightning. Um, and so even even what you see here, uh, it's been done on on a tripod. For example, the iPhone was like on a tripod, standing. Uh, the the cupcake was rotated with a turntable. So if you do it by hand, your hand is always shaking when, when you take the camera, so you will have blurry pictures. Um, so you, you still need to have kind of a little bit of a setup to, to achieve this, um, uh, this um, kind of uh, model. And, uh, and then when you go into uh, yeah, just, just one frame about uh, the, the standards, you want to have it as uh, as close to the real, um, so real life. Uh, but also, uh, you want to have, um, especially uh, like all of these standards um, are are dealing with uh, the color capture. Um, they're they're making some techniques that the, how then to capture um, uh, specular maps. Uh, but for the moment, they, they mostly are dealing with. Um, setups um, um, and um, workflows how to capture the uh, the correct um, color information um, and also they uh, as, I, as I said before um, when you for example in the in the software you can also make camera camera calibration so this is um, where you calibrate your camera to your uh, lens because um, there are always uh, different lenses. Always introduce uh, these distortions uh, when you when you create an image, and uh, you always have to make a camera camera calibration. And uh, when you have a D DSLR camera and a different setup uh, with the camera and the lens, and uh, but of course uh, Apple doesn't need that because it's I mean, it's always the same camera on a phone. Um, I mean. You don't need to do camera calibration. The the software itself is just uh, um, using that. Um, it I mean it still introduces uh, some problems when you use. Um, uh, so I would say it's optimized for Apple phones, um, but if you but you can use uh, in a software you can use um, uh, photos from other cameras. Like in the in the PhotoCatch, you can use you can also take the 
uh, you can also bring the uh, photos from any camera or DSLR. Uh, but uh, you will not have information uh, of this color lens calibration. Um, was uh, was this uh, deviation? Uh, how big was this deviation? So um, you, because you don't have this information, you you will do, don't satisfy these uh, standards. And so in the end, um, uh, object capture is is cool, but um, when you when you want to create these kind of uh, reports. Uh, uh, it's it's not meant for 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 this. So, I took a little bit longer, but sorry for that. Uh, I, wait a minute, I have to check. Just la last page, last page. No, click. Yes. Um, so, this was the the kind of uh, short presentation. Uh, now we can go uh, into uh, because uh, Rock, I'm already reading the comments. And I think uh, there are no uh, new questions, so uh, we can now officially open the q and I will uh, have to stay a little bit in Discord, but I, will, I also have live guests, so I will also talk to them. Yeah, no problem. I can actually take over the Discord. Uh, and thank you for the lovely presentation, Shiga. Um, it was quite cool. And, and maybe one, one question from me. Uh, would be like when do you think like that um, this kind of like photogrammetry would like come into like a normal workflow of like you know making assets for I don't know for movies. Uh, I, I know I know that's all, but like when it kind of be like a mainstream, right? Because I think now only like the um, the bigger studios are doing it, I guess. But yeah. when it would be like, you know, like kind of like uh, widespread that maybe also like indies could do it or maybe like smaller like AA studios uh, could use something I mean, like this. I mean, depends depends on what kind of uh, workflow are you uh, using. So, so um, specifically, uh, if, I, if I go back to, to object capture is that um, they're using, they're, they have uh, collaborated with Pixar uh, to create a new uh, format called uh, USD. Uh, you, I think it's called USD Z, and basically it's so this this uh, offers more flexibility in terms of collaboration. So it it stores more data, um, not just I mean stores uh, 3D model, texture, all the maps, uh, the scenery, the animation. So um, you can you use one one format and, and kind of put it the way. And uh, if you if you go look. Um, if you go look into the Apple presentation, um, um, I think it's called specifically Capture 3D uh, workflow, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, they have this uh, specific presentation about the workflows. I mean, of course, they're using the examples like um, how to then use it in Maya, uh, which is like really on professional level. And then you import some stuff into, into um, ZBrush or um, Substance Designer. And uh, the point of it is that uh, the, the, the kind of idea from Apple, why they, they also worked on, on object capture. So they bring photogrammetry inside this work, workflow, like they, they optimize it, they, they make it easier to, um, uh, easier to include photogrammetry techniques into the workflows, right? So for example, they also showcase then, uh, so they, 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 they quickly created like a scene, they storyboarded, they, they make pancakes, they make a 3D model of pancakes. They throw it into Houdini to make uh, effects of uh, syrup flowing, for example. Um, so basically, they, uh, that's why they use USDZ format in the object capture. Um, but I mean, in, in terms, uh, if you, if, but this is specifically in this kind of high, highly efficient uh, collaborative workflows in, in higher studios, that's why um, a lot of maybe that's why a lot of studios also use Max because yeah, you know, like this mm -hmm. feature can save you a lot of time in terms of uh, adding photogrammetry. So um, Apple is all, always working on, on on this kind of uh, tweaks. But uh, but if you're at home um, and and um, and you want to work it yourself, I mean um, at least uh, you 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 can start with a trial. Uh, I mean, uh, Metashape has a $180 uh, license, so that's quite affordable for, for the indie studio. Uh, 
Uh, mm -hmm. You can then, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's up there with reality capture. There's not a big difference. It's just that reality capture has a little bit um, easier. I mean, even even like I said, um, if you just license the 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 the, the photos, it, you can get quite cheap models from that. Um, the difference uh, uh, with reality capture is why is why is it becoming a little bit more standard and why Epic bought it is because they have better algorithms. Um, so you don't need you don't need a, a, a big workstation. So it's it's more optimized that way. So you can throw uh, more pictures or, because usually uh, it um, it kind of um, um, uh, scales ex exponentially. So um, if I put uh, 20 pictures into, uh, for generation, it takes me, I don't know, 10 minutes. Uh, but uh, the more pictures I take, uh, I give into the software, the, the time grows exponentially. Uh, so it can quickly, like you have high high uh, resolution pictures, you have two thousand of them. You can quickly kind of come to the limit of your mm -hmm. of your uh, like RAM or uh, hardware limitations. So at that moment, if you're dealing with really high resolution, uh, a lot of pictures at the same time, you try to generate a model, then uh, reality capture is uh, is better because you can throw more uh, uh, to it for the same hardware. Okay, thank, thanks for the, the answer. And there is one question from Andre. Uh, do you have any like cool examples to show? Maybe at, at hand. Um, uh, where we are dealing with uh, is the... Um, so I have just kind of like, I cannot really show the, the, the company ones, but... Uh, face... No, no, no. Da, 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 da. But I can show it. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so for example, I can show you uh, quickly a model um, that I did from like uh, one, a year ago. Oh, let me, okay, yes. So I think it's still streaming, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. For example, yeah. so for example, this is uh, this is that uh, just a model that I did outside. You can see the shadows. Uh, it was made in the sun, kind of uh, for test. So we can uh, analyze. Um, the, also, there is one one um, uh, thing that uh, you should always be mindful. Yes, whenever you take pictures, try to make them uh, from the same distance uh, as possible because you will get uniform resolution over the the mesh. Uh, because sometimes if you if you go uh, like some parts will be more um, will have better resolution some parts will have lower resolution um, that's why you want to keep the distance of the camera um, more uniform it's not really recommended to use autofocus but at some points uh, you cannot uh, you cannot you cannot avoid um, uh, using autofocus um, so let me see this is a high poly model um, uh, that's a high poly model, but then uh, on in the uh, so the, and that that is for example the example of uh, a low poly model that you can see a really low poly that you would use in a in a mobile phone. Uh, this one doesn't have a normal map, so it don't really uh, uh, does it does have, but it's um, it's not uh, it's not good enough. So you still see like this would be a, a two two decimal, like it's too lower information. Uh, maybe you can use it as an asset if it's uh, further away uh, on a mobile phone. Um, and uh, yeah, Metashape, uh, no, no, not Metashape, but Sketchfab is uh, a really nice software. Uh, so for example, I can show you also um, uh, an example that we did with laser scan. So this is um, kind of from Akbarit on Voji Potok. Uh, we don't have a drone. So that's what you see, lack of information here, uh, because you, we have the laser scanner on the, on the bottom and uh, we cannot really scan uh, here or, or on the top. Uh, that's why you would, you, you would use a drone to capture images from here and, and get additional data for the 3D model. Um, also here, so yeah, this is kind of uh, just, just our example of, of uh, um, presentation for for the 
Цветко. CUDA softwares? Uh, non CUDA software, yeah. Um, I mean, for example, that's specifically in, in Meshroom. Um, if you use um, um, uh, if you use def maps to create your 3D model, um, you need you need you need the graphic the graphics card. So basically, in MetaShape, what you do is you cancel. Um, you generate the model directly from a dense cloud. So you basically just uh, delete the, the node that uh, is, um, uh, I forgot a little bit, but I think it's called death map generation. Uh, you just cancel that one and then you can use Meshroom um, without uh, NVIDIA card. Uh, any other, I think, uh, I remember, I think, um, for example, uh, if, so even, um, uh, Meshroom you can use uh, without NV NVIDIA card. Um, it's just that then you can you you don't really uh, use. Um, uh, I'm not really I'm not really not really that precise on on the which which software uses CUDA because I mean we we use we have NVIDIA cards that's why I I, I had never really uh, I re never really needed yet to answer this question uh, except Meshroom when I was using my own computer. So, uh, but recommended to work during this crisis and there any great non-CUDA software. Um, yeah, but in, in general, in general, what you want to, I mean, I think, I think both, uh, I'm, I'm just don't, just check please, but MetaShape and Reality probably should work without NVIDIA uh, cards. Uh, but in terms of uh, graphic power, um, of, I mean, if you if you if you don't throw high resolution pictures, then then it would be enough. But like the more high resolution, the more pictures, uh, it it just uh, then um, it can quickly like your graphics card can 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 run out of RAM. Um, so basically, there is a RAM limitation, but in terms of CUDA cores, it's just speed. So so basically, just the amount of time. Uh, but if you don't have enough RAM on your graphics card, then your, um, I mean, you will, it will crash. Okay. Um, uh, I, yes. Thank I you, Enriga. And, and do you have any questions from the audience at uh, Kiblad Valle? Uh... Um, we, we, will, we will discuss. Ah, it. We will open a beer and uh, it's Friday. Ah, night, okay, so. okay, okay. So, <laughs> Um, so I guess that's it. If there are like no any more questions, um, and if you want, uh, you can join us over at Discord server, like for like online hanging. And uh, everybody at Kibla Dvalev will open a beer, as Giga said. And um, yeah, and uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, next month there will be a Game Jam Plus, which is a really cool Game Jam if you want to attend. And uh, we sadly canceled the Slovenian Games Conference due to uncertainty and uh, out of like changing stuff currently with, with the pandemic situation. And we sadly said that not this year, but you can you can expect it in probably in April or, or May, but we'll see, we will we'll announce exact dates. Um, so yeah, that's it and thank you for coming. Thank you a lot, Rock, and uh, have a nice autumn <laughs> and also a, a nice game jam. Cool, the top. Uh...